So Confucius is criticized for being very keen on observing certain particular details, but it's the spirit of it that he fundamentally thinks has to be there. Um, going through the motions is not sufficient. Um, even doing things somewhat oddly or differently maybe might be appropriate given the situation. What all this points to is the fact that the Confucian ethical vision is what we might call a form of ethical particularism. When we were talking about Western ethics rather briefly, particularly in connection with Kant, I suggested that in recent Western ethical thought, a lot of attention had been given to rules. So for example, when Kant says, we could apply the categorical imperative if you're thinking about whether this is the right thing to do or not. Granted, um, you have to figure out how to describe what it is you're thinking of doing. But he has a technique for figuring out, yes, this is the appropriate thing to do. And what's particularly interesting about the Kantian approach is that the whole process of thinking about the categorical imperative is to try to pull yourself out of any particular relationship to other people. To sort of think, what should anybody in this situation do? What's appropriate, or not appropriate necessarily in um, minute detail, but what is inappropriate in this situation for anybody? And there's a good reason philosophically why he does this. His view is, we're always being tempted by things we want. Um, and we want to get these things just in terms of our desires, almost without regard to what it costs. And so if we can work around people to get what we want, there's always going to be a kind of tendency within us to uh, desire to do that. So it's important mentally to remove yourself from what's particular about your situation and your agendas and just think, is this an appropriate way for anybody in this situation to act? And if you realize that it isn't, then you probably realize at that point that you're just trying to rationalize because this, this uh, is going to lead to some goal you would really like to come about. The Confucian orientation, however, is really very different from this. The idea of removing yourself from your own connections with everybody would be really an anathema to the Confucian vision. The whole basis for um, not only social harmony, but ethical behavior generally, is that people are related. In fact, Confucius thinks it's very important how you're related to people, what's appropriate. He would think that a funeral for a parent should be a very, very elaborate thing as compared to a funeral that you might have for someone that is more distant to you, if you're the person in charge. In other words, your particular relationship to an individual, in this case, dictates what the appropriate behavior is. So in general, what we get in the Analects are not statements about, this is what you should do. Um, you don't get anything like the Ten Commandments of Confucianism. Why? Well, because Confucius is very, very much aware that anything that's too general is not going to give you enough information to deal with what he thinks is really important, namely harmonizing particular relationships. So what we find instead are discussions. Um, the Analects can be translated as, in effect, revolving discussions as well, or revolving conversations. And the reports given in the Analects are really much as the kind I've read. The master said such and such. And oftentimes there's a little vignette. You know, sometimes he's uh, kibitzing with his students or one of his students, uh, one in particular who's always rather um, kind of keen on his own ability to just go in there and follow the way and do the right thing. Um, and Confucius kind of wants to slow him down and say, you know, you're a little bit too enthusiastic sometimes and maybe you didn't get the point. Um, you get all these very particular interactions. And the fact that Confucius says to this kind of headstrong person like, oh, yes, you know, I'm here to defend the way, um, you know, well, slow down a little bit, that wouldn't be an appropriate thing to say to another kind of student. Um, again, we have this sense of someone whose reactions are very, very much dictated on precisely what the situation is. So we don't find extremely general rules or really rules at all. Instead, what we get is, once again, as I was suggesting with the I Ching, certain situations where Confucius said certain things, um, sometimes with more or less context,
And the way to uh, figure out how to apply them is something that's left to us. This indeed is something that um, has a bit to do with the way he understands ritual as well. Uh, at one point in the Analects, someone points out that, um, or he points out that traditionally there had been a very expensive kind of cloth that was used in a certain kind of ritual, and people had recently started using one that was less expensive, and he seemed to think this was perfectly fine. It wasn't that he was absolutely a stickler for every detail, especially if there might be some good reason to substitute something that was more affordable to most people. Instead, it's, it's really what's appropriate, what conveys this human spirit um, most effectively. Are our relationships being supported or nourished by our rituals or not? Um, so I think that there is a kind of unfortunate tendency in the West at times to imagine Confucius as being someone who is kind of a stickler for rules. This is really a very wrong way to look at him. Um, in general, he does, he, he will say very straightforward things. I mean, he doesn't, he doesn't uh, try to delude anyone when he thinks something is really uh, morally abhorrent. But nevertheless, it's not with the idea of, you know, here are the rules to live by. Instead, it's here is a way of orienting yourself to other people. And to look back again at his context in his time and place where basically people were getting to be less civil to each other, he suggests that ritual is a way of becoming more civil. I think it's comparable perhaps to um, a debate that's sometimes um, ra <laughs> waged right now about school uniforms. Some people would argue that wearing uniforms at school actually heightens the level of good behavior. Why? Because people feel like they've sort of taken on a role as a student and they feel a little bit more like behaving as a student once they've assumed um, a particular garb. Now, I don't know whether there are scientific studies that can absolutely demonstrate a correlation, but I think Confucius would think this is completely as one would expect. That by assuming the garb of ritual, you've actually taken on something that becomes you. You become the role. And this is actually, I think, something very important too. Often when we use the word ritual, I think, it tends to seem something sort of psychologically detached from us. Um, something foreign, you know, maybe something that you have to read a special book and, you know, memorize an incantation or something. It seems something that doesn't have to do with our everyday life. So I think it's valuable to remember Fingeret's example of shaking hands. I doubt many of us would think of that prima facie as a ritual or standing up to um, sing the Star Spangled Banner at a baseball game. Another ritual behavior that I think we don't usually think of as a ritual behavior. But nevertheless, in a, an important sense, it is. It's something that has to do with the way we take our place in our community, take our place among other human beings, and express our willingness to participate. So what Confucius does, rather than suggest, here are the rules to live by, and you figure out how to apply them, is to really focus much more on particular virtues that lend oneself to being exemplary. The exemplary person is going to be one who does con is concerned about relationships among other human beings. Uh, uh, an exemplary person is one who is able to really feel at one with the ritual. Um, an exemplary person is not going to be someone who is really sort of feeling that they're reading something stilted when they're taking their wedding vows, for example but instead they've become one with any ritual that they're engaged in, and it's become tailored to their actual situation. In the next lecture, we'll talk more about the particular virtues that Confucius recommends in addition to the recommendation of Li. But all of this is, again, in response to an idea that society needs certain kinds of forms in order to really function as a society. Thank you.